In the news this week, 457 visa holders' education fees remain unchanged, with no progress made. And Aboriginal MPs push forward a bill amendment to recognise Indigenous Australians in WA. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Staniscar. Good evening. The education fee nightmare for 457 visa holder families is far from over. Despite the long-term campaign from lobby groups and politicians, the state government stand by the policy. This report from Daniel Edwards. The fight against the $4,000 education fee has been a long and winding journey for 457 visa families. Despite their efforts, the campaign's success has only been partial. Plenty of families um, in, a, in a situation where this $4,000 is, is a step too far and they physically don't have $4,000 to give the government. So uh, it, it's a major issue for many families. Last year, the state government announced that 457 visa holders who earn less than $75,000 a year will be exempt from the education fee. Labor MP Stephen Dawson has continued to show disapproval towards the policy. Never at that stage mentioned that these fees would be would come into play. In fact, as a minister has pointed out previously, it wasn't on the government's mind at that stage to bring in these fees. WA Education Minister Peter Collier has apologised but stated that the fee is necessary. We are at a situation now where we can look at the policy itself and what I would regard as a fair um, landing point in terms of the fee. The fee was introduced in the state budget in 2013. Daniel Edwards, WAMN News. Western Australia has made a historic progress towards recognising Aboriginal people. Labor MPs Josie Farrar and Ben Wyatt together called for amendment in Parliament. The Premier also showed his support. Helen Fung has a story. Conclusions from a state parliamentary committee report tabled this week shows progress towards a constitutional recognition to the Aboriginal people as the first people of Western Australia. Labor MP Josie Farrar sees this as an important step towards reconciliation. The Aboriginal People's Constitution, with the changes and recommendations that have been adopted and placed in there, will give us an equal opportunity. Premier Colin Barnett agreed with Farrar's comment, but stated that due processes have to be followed before the constitutional change can be finally enacted. Legislation to uh, change the constitution could have had an unintended consequence on uh, land ownership titles, pastoral leases, native title, whatever else. And the correct thing for a government to do is to check that. Shadow Aboriginal Affairs Minister Ben Wyatt was at hand to support Ferris' proposal, but was critical of the Premier's handling of debates on closing down remote Aboriginal communities. Mr Barnett has pronounced the verdict, those communities are guilty, and now we're seeing a very different evidence presented on a daily basis. Uh, that's what concerns me. And yeah, we're going to work progressively through this and there'll be no changes occurring in the next one to two years. We've made that very clear. Um, but the taxpayer cannot afford, the state cannot afford, to provide continuous funding to small communities. Helene Fong, WAMN News. Although the possibility of a European wasp attack in Perth might seem a bit far-fetched, the latest warning suggests it might be closer than you think. Residents in the southern suburbs were warned by local governments about a possible outburst of the pest if actions are not taken. Cobra Mayor Logan Howlett urged residents to contact the Department of Agriculture to adopt a trap. The European wasp is attracted to meat and fish, um, so or even pet food, etc. So if you're not certain and you see these uh, wasps flying around, uh, very similar to the paper wasp but with those two defining features of black antennae and their legs tucked up under them, um, you need to report it. Fremantle residents are appealing to the state government to refurbish the Royal George Hotel before selling the site. The historic icon was originally constructed in 1903 and has been slowly decaying since it came under the ownership of the National Trust 10 years ago. Fremantle MP Simone McGurk and residents believe the hotel should be restored and maintained. The big concern about the sale is that the government will just undertake the sale for a quick, quick cash grab and there won't be any deal put in place that will ensure that the heritage values of the hotel are really secured. Today's response from the Minister and Simone's work on it was very touching and very moving. Uh, we just got to hope that you know, it's not just politics as usual and that, that 
that things can uh, proceed. There are more details unfolding regarding the 27-year-old German Wings co-pilot André Lubitz, who had deliberately crashed a passenger plane into the French Alps, killing all 150 people on board. The latest investigation revealed Mr Lubitz had allegedly torn up medical notes from his doctor and that he had been receiving psychiatric treatment. Investigators believed Mr Lubitz had hidden his illness from his employers. Britain's hit TV series Downtown Abbey will be drawing to a close after the drama reaching its sixth season. However, the show's executive producer is not willing to spill the beans about the plot of the final episode. The series was set in the early 20th century, highlighting the class division and the social change in Britain. So the final episode is coming up. You gonna watch it? I don't watch much TV, really just some news. Oh, well, at least you're informed? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, that's good enough in this business. Anyway, that's it from us. Thanks for your company. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. Good night.